One of the drills that I'm really into right now is, you know, the golf swing is really, can you get from a really good address position, can you then simulate your impact position and then go through to your follow through position? Because we spend so much time, and I know I was a <laughs> culprit of that, we spend so much time thinking about our backswing, especially the club golfers. They're grinding on their backswing. How, where's my position? He gets the ball, so they're full back and half through. So I want you to think about the other way. Let's go half back and all the way through. It will make a big difference to your game. Because you remember, you're collecting the golf ball. You're not hitting at the golf ball. You know, youngsters are fine. But uh, I'd love the, the youngsters out there to imitate or visualize your favorite players follow through your Jason Days, your Adam Scotts, your Rory McIlroy's. You know, you know how they finish, how they wrap the club around their neck. So you think, oh, I love that follow through. I'm, I'm going to go for the old classic Ben Hogan. You remember that pose with the one iron at, at Marion? So you stand up and think, well, there's a dress. There's it. I want to clear my body for a fade. So I've got to feel where my hips are for a fade and I'm going to get through and I'm going to pose my Hogan finish. So there you go. So I'm going to start from there. Goal is to feel impact and then get through to that follow through. And that is great, great for the club golfer because so many of you are stuck here. You've had your long to short. So let's do the absolute opposite. So once again, feel address and then feel impact. That's where I want to get to. Look how I twist your hips out of the way. You're trying to keep your spine angle at the same angle. That's so important because if you go at it with your hips, Look how everything changes. So that starts to teach you, ah, address, impact are so similar. Get out of your way. Give yourself a chance to get your arms through. So here we go. Good address, impact. So how often do you practice hitting balls out of the rough? I bet very rarely. And so I'm on the side of the range. Great opportunity to hit a few, to get some feedback, because it's a different world. You know, you're in wet grass. How does the ball react, how does it fly, how does it spin, all those sort of things. And if you're playing a golf course, maybe a practice round for, for an event coming up, I always tell my kids in the, the Faldo series, you know, I used to hopefully drive it down the fairway and if a pin was on the left, I kick it in the left rough. That's the best way to learn because now I've got to get in there and now it's a really tricky shot. What can I do? How can I control it to get the, the golf ball on the green? So think about that to start off with and then a few basic things. What we're trying to do, obviously, we, we, I, number one, I played a fade out of the rough, I bet 98% of the time, rarely, unless I really had to do something, hook it around a tree. But if it was a straight four shot, I always played a fade because I wanted to get that steepness and hang on to the angles. As you know, we always talk about it, the rough grabs the hosel, turns it over, and that's how you get a, a mega fly. So if you can, that's the number one thing you want to be looking for. So, you know, open the face up a little bit and think about, you know, your goal is, can I get the heel of the club to the golf ball first? and even with a face a little bit open. Then you want angle of attack, wants to be a touch deeper, you know, coming down it. So a couple of ways you can do that, either obviously put a little bit more weight on it and then actually pick the club up and drop it down a touch or, or the way that you hang on to the angle. You're not, you don't want to be releasing the club. You want to feel like as you pull down, that club is staying high, 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 of course centrifugal force. You want to feel like you can get your hands down onto your right leg here and the club face is still up. It will still happen, I promise you. Centrifugal force is gonna come down and collect the ball. And again, I always wanted to feel my right shoulder got to the golf ball first, or ahead of, certainly ahead of the club head. So I was covering the ball as we would call that now, and then I would drive through and rip through it and, and power it forward. So let's give that a go. So open that face up a touch, get that right shoulder high, ready to stay there, get that first and hold on to the angle. There you go. Chops it out, got a bit of height on it. And the other strategy thing is play for front edge. Because if it looks like a flyer, more likely will. So I used to just, all I wanted the yardage to the front edge, get 150 yards, whatever it was. And I would pick the club for that. So I've got plenty of compensation. So if the thing does come out like a rocket, hopefully it stops somewhere on the back of the green. If it comes out great, whatever you plan to land, it maybe just on or just short of the green to bobble it on. But try that as a simple tip. Just play for front edge, front edge get a little bit of fly, release it up into the middle of the green. You're laughing. One of the most important things in practicing when you head to the practice ground is picking a target and, and aligning yourself to the target. It's something I really beat on with my kids from the my Faldo series because this is what I did as a kid and it all happened by accident for me when I went to 
Wellingon City, my practice ground was only a seven iron in length, but I had a green, a bunker, and a flag. Little did I know, you know, I spent thousands of hours hitting a golf ball over this bunker onto the green at a flag. Well, 30, 40 years later, the you know, sports psychologists go, oh, wow, this was fantastic targeting. And so let me explain that, because what happens is on a, you come to a range, you've got a lot of targets, and if you're not paying attention, you can stand up and aim a little bit to the right of the target. I'm going for that 200, say, and you hit a shot. So without realizing, you're aiming a little bit to the right, and you swing, and, and the good old gray matter here is trying to help you. So you think you're comfortable, you think you're aiming, well, you're only five degrees off, and what happens next is you compensate, come over the top, and now, wow, I've hit it on target. So you say to yourself, well, that was a good shot. So how many of us have done that, <laughs> aimed a little off, little right one day, little left, you, it, you compensate, you hit it, got on the range, and hands up, who gets to the second tee and says, I don't get it. I was hitting it great on the range, I can't get it on the golf course. So the reason why is alignment. So you've got to just grind on it. And I did this by accident, threw a club down. And remember, it's like railway tracks. So you want this, you got, obviously you've got your, your ball line here, but your feet line and everything just wants to go a little left. So if you're hitting wedges, just put it, whatever, three or four yards left, mid irons, five or six. As you work through, obviously progressively, the railway tracks just to get a little bit wider. You know, I love fading the ball, so I was quite happy feeling I was aiming left and hitting the ball back to the target. So for me, this is one of my absolute musts because hopefully you can put a club down or alignment stick the same every day. You double check it, you put it in position, and when you stand, more often than not, you're going to stand to this because it's straight and you won't like that. It will feel uncomfortable. So don't give it a kick and put it online. Suffer it for a little while. Think, okay, let's get my feet, my knees, my hips, my chest, all in the right direction. That will help you with your ball position. You start, again, it will feel awkward for a while because I bet you're too far back or too far forward if you've got too much weight. So let's combine a little bit of golf psychology and, a, and bunker play because if you say to yourself, I can't get out of a bunker, never have, never will, get somebody else to do it for you. Mimic somebody else. It's what many of the greatest players do. They mimic others. And I did that as a kid. I watched Gary Player, and obviously I played with Seve, Ernie Els, great bunker players. Like, so copy them, copy exactly what they did. So Gary used to put his, put his weight in like on the outside and the inside of his feet. So his knees were bent forward, open up the face and that club was now pointing straight at him, super open face, and he, his strike was all about striking a match. So he used to imagine backswing and strike the match, you see? So he had that speed at the bottom. So try that. What I want you to do is try these different styles and see which one works. So you're leaning into it, open the face, strike the match. You'll get some flight and some kind of you know, reaction on the green. So learn from that. Then a sevi. Sevi was great, you know, if, he, if I went in the bunker and I looked at my life, oh, no chance of getting out of here, I said, well, Sevi would find a way. And one of the things he would, was great at was adapting. So when he won at Leatham, those bunkers are like this, little small bunkers. So he made a swing, big wide stance, hands super low, down in his knees. And then he would cup it on the way back because there, no, there was a bank behind you. There was, you know, the bunker bank. So cup it hard and fast, get the thing up and do the same going back the other way. So this is a really good one for short bunker shots when you just want to pop it over a lip. So the secret is super low hands, cup the wrist straight up and a bit of speed going through. You get that nice little popping sound. So you're trying to get there and just dig the heel into the sand. Boom, there you go. That's the one I'm looking for. So it just comes up nice and soft. And then Ernie was a lovely bunker play where, like, like a pilot, minimum, you hear the guy say minimums, minimums. It was just so simple. There's a line to the bunker, to the, to the flag, a little bit of open face, simple, simple stance. Now I used to do copy that, but I used to add to help me I used to lift my right heel, which got my right shoulder high. It's so important. It's a game of opposites. If this right side is high, then you hit down on it. If this is low, guess what? You hit it fat and you're trying to hit up on it. So remember, you've got to be going down. So if you're having trouble with that, lift your right heel, get your right shoulder as high as possible. Just aim like a yard right and swing a yard left. 
and you get that. So how nice and simple is that? And Ernie, you would just literally use the power, not like Phil, you know, Phil would have a big long swing to lob it out. If, but Ernie, we're almost like, all I need is this amount of power, nice simple stroke, back and through, pick your landing spot, pretty darn good. So the secret to this is copy the pros. They're the best, visualize you're one of them, try three or four different styles, pick the one that works for you. Commonal Garden tea peg. I can use this for a couple of tips to really check a few things in your golf swing. So number one is your takeaway. So put it, you know, a good six inches behind the ball. Now, if you've got too much weight on your left foot, which most club golfers would do, they'd find it really hard to scrape away and brush that tee peg away. So you then have to think, ah, so let me see if I need to move my weight back a touch because we want to either be, you know, we want to feel either perfectly 50-50 or even a little, you know, 55, 45%, so a little bit more on your back foot. Won't do you any harm to, feel, ah, now it's so much easier to scrape the tee peg and then keep going. When you've, when you've mastered that a few times, feel comfortable, actually scrape the tee peg, keep going on your back swing and through. And that really, I love that, that drill, so simple, because if you're smooth here and then you progressively build up the momentum, that's really important, okay? So now the, I want to add to that quickly, if you can't feel that weight transference, I mean, Jack Nicholas did this every morning as his warm up, because he wanted great footwork. So just simply, look, I'm loading, feel like it's 90% over here. So put 90 there, try and turn your shoulder 90 degrees, yeah? And then throw over the other side, put 90% on the other side. That's a great little warm up to give you some feeling of, wow, that's what weight transference is all about. Right, and then another simple thing to do, tee it up super high, almost driver height, and try any club in the bag, especially, especially like a time on a very windy day, or even if you've got one of those little skinny five woods or something, you tee it up too high when it's a real blustery day, when it's blowing into you, well now you've got to get super level, haven't you? You've got to be super central, super level, because if, you come, if you're coming down on it, you hit the ball up here, you'll hit it all over the show. It's a, actually, it's a, it's a tough drill on a, on a tough day. So I used to love this because it made me really concentrate. So simple tip or a thought, think where your chin is. So if your chin is staying central over the ball and your chin is staying level, big help. So just think of that. So nice, easy swings, get your chin on the ball and how about that? Right out the middle. So if you can then middle it, and a little knockdown swing, you'll get a great trajectory that so gives you confidence that, ah, I can play in the wind. The number one question my kids from my photo series ask me is how do I deal with pressure? So I've got one here, the six foot putt to win. And what do we do? Do we hope we make a good stroke? Do we wish it in? Do we just let it happen? Or do we don't think? Well, I'm a big fan. I mean, Deepak Chopra's great word is what's your intention? Well, my intention is to hold it. So if you have an intention to hold it, You've got to also then see it go in. That's the real important part. You've got to see this golf ball track and hitting and disappearing down into the hole. Hey, I'm fast tracking here. We assume you've got a decent stroke. You've done all your work. You've got your belief in all of that. So, you know, what I used to do, number one, putting the ball down is very important. Many people put alignment lines on it. And so, uh, and I used to, once I'd lined up everything, I, I would then pick a spot, literally, a, blade of grass right behind the back of the ball. I was famous for keeping my head down, but I could actually really focus on a spot. And even with my practice swings, I would be looking at that spot because I wanted to keep everything perfectly still. And then you calm yourself down, of course. And then the next most important thing, if it's a six footer, practice a six footer, please. Because I see so many pro arms where they stand and they go, whoo, 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 whoo. right, great. Now I'm lovely and relaxed. And because you stand over that, this fellow says, please don't hit it like that. And you go, yeah and it will never get there, yeah? So if you've got a six footer, stand up there. If you like having practice swings, a lot of players now don't, but you've got to feel that six footer and you've got to see it go down. And then when you get over it, the lineman, you've got to calm yourself down, be lovely and still, feel your breathing. And then you've got to then just say, look back a couple of times, you see the ball tracking down. Okay, and so you've, you've tracked it, your intention is to hold it. You've, as I said, we're fast tracking you, you've you, you got trust in your stroke, and that's the time to lock into what you believe. So you might be saying square, square, I'm trying to keep that face square, square, or it's one, two, whatever it is, you need something, or smooth, smooth. You've got to, I found I need a little auditory command. So when I land, aim there, 
I get ready to go and I think smooth, smooth. And there you go. Just like the old days, never missed.